Witches and Wizards, it's almost time for one of the most anticipated games of 2023 to be released. Yes, that's right. Hogwarts Legacy is almost upon us. Well, for some of us. Welcome everybody to the Lumberzack Gaming Channel, your place for friendly, quality gaming content. Today, we're going to be talking about everything you need to know about Hogwarts Legacy and what you can expect when it releases. There is plenty to talk about and two big things that I am stoked to see that are towards the end of this video, so be sure to stick around for that. But if you're ready, let's open up the map to all things Hogwarts Legacy. And I solemnly swear that I am up to no good. It's the 1800s in the Wizarding World, which is about 100 years before the events of the Harry Potter books. In this original story, you will be taking on the life of a fifth year student at Hogwarts. Not only that, you're a student who was granted late admittance because we hold a key to an ancient secret that is threatening the world of witchcraft and wizardry. I know, it's almost like we're the main character or something. With a huge cast of new characters, you know, because the ones that we know about aren't even born yet, Hogwarts Legacy is set to be in a world that is both new and familiar to fans of the franchise. So you'll be able to experience the castle of Hogwarts, the town of Hogsmeade, the Forbidden Forest, but in a new way that you've never experienced before. And you just might see a familiar face or two that are likely going to be undead. The character creation for Hogwarts Legacy is pretty in-depth, and this is where there's tons of kudos to the development team because their goal was to make sure that every single person felt like they could really put themselves into Hogwarts. Obviously, you can create a character that looks nothing like you, but how cool is it to be able to make yourself into a Hogwarts student like you've been dreaming about since you were a little kid? Or at least when you first learned about the Wizarding World. But if you're like me, you grew up with these books and these movies, and you've always dreamed of a time where you could become a wizard or witch yourself. You start off with a base preset, and then you can go in from there to do a lot of customization from face shape to skin color to glasses. You get to start off with glasses, and as somebody who has glasses, that's not really something that happens in a lot of games. So I'm pretty Pretty excited about that all the way to a ton of new hairstyles and hair colors face blemishes freckles moles scars all the good things and you can continue to customize your character throughout the game upon creating your character you are going to be able to pick your house and I'm sure that long-term Harry Potter fans already know which house that they're going to go into first so make sure to let me know in the comments which house you're starting off with but each house has very unique and specific things about it especially when it comes to their common rooms and the people that are surrounding their houses all throughout the story like if you just take a moment to take in all the little details of every single house from Slytherin to Hufflepuff to Ravenclaw to Gryffindor these houses are designed in a way that make you feel like you are part of that specific house which is definitely something that all Harry Potter fans want. My biggest hope is that this game will have a ton of replayability so that I can go through and I can make a character in every single house and experience the game in a brand new way. This game not only takes place on the school grounds of Hogwarts, but it is an open world experience and you'll be able to travel around to surrounding locations like the Forbidden Forest and Hogsmeade and some entirely new locations that haven't even been revealed yet. And if you look at the attention to detail on the castle, this is the Harry Potter game that I think fans have been waiting for for a very long time. Personally, I feel like I've been waiting decades for this type of Harry Potter game, so I'm really looking forward to going through the entire castle, going on the grounds, going out through the forest, every little inch of this place I want to go experience. And even in this open world concept type game, it will give us the freedom to attend classes, to grow your abilities, to brew potions, to tame beasts, and we're going to talk about all that here coming up soon. But rest assured, this game looks incredible and there is tons of things to explore and secrets to be found. Now naturally, I know you want to explore every little inch of this place and you want to really do some hardcore adventuring. But you do have to remember that you are a student and so there will be classes to attend. And you'll be attending classes such as Charms, Defense Against the Dark Arts, Herbology, and Potions to learn how to cast new spells, brew new potions, grow magical plants, and more, all for your use throughout the game. And, in case you're worried about your broomstick handling, there will be a flying class that will help you master the art of broomstick flying and make exploring the wider Hogwarts castle grounds a little bit easier. I can't wait to figure out what evil person is teaching Defense Against the Dark Arts in the 1800s. There are plenty of things that are going to contribute to the gameplay and the combat of this game when it comes to character customization, your abilities, the potions that you create, the items that you collect, 
And all of these things come together to ultimately create your gameplay experience. So if you want to spend your time growing mandrakes so that you can use them to stun enemies in battles, you can do that. If you want to spend all your time trying to upgrade your spells so they pack a better punch, you can also do that. There's a lot of elements to this game that are going to ultimately create the combat system and the gameplay system that you want to see in this game. So going to classes and upgrading your skills and creating new potions are all going to help you in the adventure that this game is unfolding for you. Personally, I'm really excited about this because it feels like I'm going to actually be learning at Hogwarts. Again, like I'm living the fantasy that I've always wanted to live. We've also got a really good look at how the flying is going to be working in this game. And it's even pretty fitting considering this is the 1800s. And even broomstick flying is a very robust system. So you start off with a basic broom and you can upgrade it with cosmetics. And you can go to the shop in Hogsmeade and continue to upgrade your broom so that it runs better. Ultimately, you're a pioneer for the Nimbus 2000. There's some mechanics in the game when it comes to broom flying, so if you fly up high in the air, it will take out some stamina so you won't be able to fly as fast for as long, whereas if you fly closer to the ground, you'll be able to have an unlimited stamina bar to go a lot faster, but the development team did this so that you get to experience more of the game rather than just flying over all the really cool stuff. Personally, I don't want to miss anything, I'll be flying through the trees. However, I do know that it'll be exciting to fly up really high into the air and see the entire landscape that unfolds before you. The seasons will also change throughout your time in this game, so when it's winter there will be Christmas decorations everywhere, snow all over the ground. This game has a living, breathing atmosphere to it, really just putting you in the immersion of being a student at Hogwarts. If this video has been helpful for you so far, go ahead and hit that like button, maybe consider subscribing, you know, for me. But we're about to jump back into some details that you're going to want to hear and the two things I'm most excited for when it comes to this game. The combat of this game looks like it runs so smooth. When it comes to parrying, blocking, shooting off spells, the time slow mechanics. Honestly, this is the part I was probably most concerned about when it came to making a Harry Potter game, but it seems like with the variation of spells and how they work and how they string together in certain combos, I am very far away from worried about this combat. I mean, it looks incredible if you actually watch it. And also, making use of everything around you seems to be a big proponent in the combat in this game. And you get to experience some of the dark arts. I'm kind of a baddie. Uh, you know, I'll use the killing curse on somebody. But for real, that is actually something that you can do in this game. You don't just have to stupefy your way through enemies all day. Time for my two favorite things when it comes to this game that I'm so looking forward to. And one of those things is the Room of Requirement. Now obviously, fans of Harry Potter are going to be very familiar with this room. However, you might not be familiar with this room in this way. This is the room in which you are going to spend a lot of time and thrive, learn how to use your items, customizables. This is where you identify new types of magic. This space is a space that you can make as your own. I mean, the customization aspects of the room of requirement alone are absolutely astounding. From changing the color of things, to changing the size of things, moving everything around, and the fact that you don't go into like an overhead setting when you're customizing things, and it's literally just your character running around, picking up items, swapping them out. The animation in between switching out items is also incredible. There was a lot of time and detail that went into making this game look like a living, breathing part of the wizarding world, and I think they did a fantastic job of it. The Room of Requirement is also a place where you'll be able to upgrade your gear and learn about things in the world. So being able to get together resources and upgrade certain gear that you find out in the world and swapping those upgrades out as you need to, most of that stuff is going to be done here in the Room of Requirement. And I'm really excited to see how other people customize their rooms. The Vivarium Beast Care area is incredible. As somebody who loves these elements that are in games, I love how they've added this into the game to make it not just a separate tenant, but to actually use it as a core part of your adventuring time in the Wizarding World. Because this is where you take your beasts that you save from poachers, where you grow and raise them, where you build friendships with these beasts. Like you literally get to pet, like pet these things and like play fetch with them. But they provide materials for you that are going to be key in leveling up and creating items that are going to help you in combat and adventuring scenarios. Not only that, a ton of this area is customizable. So the trees, the wells, the chopping blocks, and you'll be able to unlock different types of avariums throughout the game. So this one kind of looks like a meadow type thing, but you'll be able to unlock a swamp area, different things throughout the game that are going to make your vivarium look completely different and customize it to the way that you want it. 
And these beasts just look so fun and incredible to be able to spend time around, to take care of, and to raise. All while reminding you that you are definitely part of the wizarding world. I wouldn't necessarily spend too much time talking about the price of a game in a video like this. However, there's a lot of different elements when it comes to which version you buy and what you get out of that. So let's go ahead and dive into that real quick. As of right now, you have the base edition, you have the deluxe edition, and you have the collector's edition. The base edition for this game is going to be $59.99 USD for the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One and $69.99 for the PS5 and Xbox Series X version. If you pre-order the base game, you will get an Onyx Hippogriff, and if you pre-order the base game on PlayStation, you'll also get a Felix Felicis Potion Recipe and a Haunted Hogsmeade Shop Quest. If you pre-order the Deluxe Edition, you'll get the same things as the standard. However, you will also get 72 hours early access. You'll also get the Dark Arts Pack, which can be bought separately. That comes with the Thestral Mount, the cosmetic set that you can see here, the Dark Arts Battle Arena, and the Garrison Hat. I do love how they put cosmetic set and hat as two different things. I feel like it's all the same thing. The Deluxe Edition for PS4 and Xbox One is $69.99 USD and $79.99 USD for the PS5 and Xbox Series X. Then we jump all the way up to the Collector's Edition, which for PS5 and Xbox Series X is $299.99 and $294.99 for the PS4 and Xbox One version. What do you get for that, you ask? You get all the same stuff as before. You also get a life-size floating ancient magic wand with a book base. It's pretty cool, but it's pretty expensive. You also get a steel case in this Kelpie robe here. From what I can see about people's reactions to this, a lot of people seem disappointed that this is all you get for this price. However, the floating wand in the book is pretty cool. Now the release date and platform is a really important thing to talk about when it comes to Hogwarts Legacy because we just got some recent news that it's somewhat delayed. The game will launch on February 10th in 2023 for next gen consoles and PC. However, for last gen consoles, the game has been delayed to April 4th for the Xbox One and the PS4. And the game has been delayed until July 25th of 2023 for the Nintendo Switch. The team has said that they want to make sure they can have the best possible game experience across all platforms and they feel this push is necessary for old gen consoles. I truly believe that this game could be a contender for one of the best games coming out in 2023. It's definitely got some steep competition for 2023. However, I think it's going to be right up there with some of the best of them. For information on more games coming out, go ahead and check this out. Consider leaving a like and hitting that subscribe button for more friendly quality gaming content, and I'll see you over there.